What's up guys? Welcome to our next video about limits. Today our topic is going to be the all but one point theorem. Now this may sort of sound confusing and convoluted. I know, like what exactly does all but one point mean? But don't worry about it. We're going to go over it real quick and we're going to actually set about proving it. And proving it is pretty simple. So first we're going to talk about what the all but, what the all but one point theorem states. And it states that given Oops, I should probably do be a V. Given that the limit as X approaches uh, C of uh, G of X is equal to L and given that F of X is equal to G of X uh, in in open interval containing containing c c being a uh, real number except at x equals c now what exactly does this mean um we're just going to slow down and take a look at the uh uh, each of the givens. So our first given is basically saying that um, this limit exists. It is equal to some real number and uh, it has epsilon delta consequences that we're going to take a look at in our proof in just a few minutes. And then this next part is saying that there's another function f of x is equal to g of x. Um, and it's equal to uh, g of x in the open interval containing c. But at x equals c these two are not equal. Uh, they are completely different, but um, as we'll see in a few minutes, that doesn't really matter. But for all the points around C, uh, those X values around C will return F of X values that are equal to G of X values. So given uh, this limit exists and given that these two functions are equal around C except at C, then the all but one point theorem states that the limit as X approaches C of F of X is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to l. But that last part isn't really important right now. The only part that's important is proving that these two limits are equal to each other even though that the point that they're looking at c um, the functions themselves do not agree on. Even though the functions do not agree on c the limits do agree. So let's go on and start proving it. So like I said earlier, the proof is actually pretty simple. Um, and we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. And we're going to list our given up in the top left hand corner. So we're given that the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to l. And we're also given that f of x is equal to g of x except at x, well, it's only equal when x is not equal to c. So let's look at the implications of this limit in terms of epsilon and delta. So this limit exists, and that means in epsilon delta form that for any epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta value also greater than zero such that If 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, then the absolute value of g of x minus l is less than epsilon. And I know you guys have seen this a thousand times, but we're still going to go over it again. So this is saying that whenever we're given an epsilon value, we can find another delta value such that when x falls within um, an interval around C that is defined by delta, then G of X falls within an interval around L defined by epsilon. And saying it is kind of confusing. So we're going to sort of draw it out with a number line. So this is our number line of X values. And we've got C here. We've got C plus delta and C, oops, minus delta. So 
Uh, since this limit exists, we're basically saying that all the x values in here from c minus delta to c plus delta, except possibly at x equals to c, that all of these x values return g of x values that are within epsilon of L. So uh, that's what makes this limit true. So now we have to go on to find the limit uh, that contains f of x instead of g of x. So you'll note that at x um, equals c, these two do not agree. But on the x values around c, like these values, these two functions, these two functions do agree. So here, at uh, between c minus delta and c, f of x equals g of x, and the same thing here between, same thing here between c and c plus delta, f of x is equal to g of x. The only place where they disagree is at c. But again, we don't care what uh, what the functions are at c. We just care what values they approach. So. Um, since these two are equal at the x values around c, we can actually plug in f of x for g here. So f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So now um, for the x values uh, within the interval from c minus delta to c plus delta, except at c, so basically this inequality, whenever x values fall within this range, whenever this inequality is true, this inequality is also true. So because, uh, because of how um, when this inequality uh, makes, so because when this inequality is true, this inequality is true, that is what is necessary to prove that a limit exists. Uh, so we can say that the limit as x approaches c of f of x, let's make that more like a c, is equal to L. But as we know, L is also equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x. So we can actually take that out and put in the limit as x approaches c of g of x. So this theorem uh, is important because it shows and again reiterates the fact that limits don't care what uh, the value of the function is at c. They don't, it doesn't matter what it is. The only thing that matters are the values around c and what values f of x or g of x is approaching. And this again reiterates that and proves that. So um, as we've proven the, uh, by the all but one point theorem, given these two, the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x.